Welcome or welcome back on C-Square. In this video clip we're going to look to the zeros of a polynomial function. Uh, first of all, we're going to look to how to find them. And if you notice here, we have two quadratics, by the way, in, in the factor form already, right? Uh, in the already factorized. And we need to find the zeros of this function. Remember, the zero of each function means when the function is zero. In this case, since we have the y form, when the y is zero. So that basically translating x minus 2 times x plus 9 equals 0. And here we use zero product property, which tells us we can have the first factor equals to 0 or the second one. And then we have x equals 2 or x equals negative 9. And these are the two moments where the uh, y is 0 the function is zero. If you plug these two values in, you're going to get y equals zero. Therefore, they are the zero of the function. Pause this video clip and do number 12. If you have these two answer for number 12, then you did a wonderful job. However, I would like you to take a look to some things. So this graph here goes with number 11. Yeah, you see this number 11, that x equals negative 9 and x equals 2 are right here. And the function E is decreasing and then E is increasing. Since this is a quadratics, we can find that uh, turning point, which is the vertex of the quadratics, if we need. That is in this case. Similar with the other one, this one is the graph for x plus 3x minus 4, and we can see x equals 4, one of the 0, x equals negative 3, the other 0. And again, the function is decreasing until it gets here, this turning point, the vertex, and then go back and increasing. Now we're going to look to cubics, but the idea is the same, right? Uh, finding the zero of this function, especially in the, is in the factor form. Here we have x plus 1 equals 0, which gives us x equals negative 1. x minus 2 equals 0, which comes with x equals 2. And the last one, x minus 3 equals 0, x equals 3. <coughs> and let's take a look to the graph, which I have it here. Right? You notice x equals negative 1. Okay, there you go, the function is 0. x equals 2, the function is 0, y is 0. And the last one, x equals 3. And again, here we see the function is increasing until you reach this um, maximum, then is decreasing until you reach this minimum and then it's increasing again okay uh, you cannot really find them in this moment uh, those uh, turning points using algebraic skill you just can look to the graph okay so uh, it looks for me like x equals uh, zero point something we have a max a turning point and uh, two point something two point five probably we have uh, another turning point minimum uh, go ahead and try number 14. If you have those answers, those are the zero of that function. And we're going to take a look to the graph now. There you go. This is the graph. Uh, this is x equals negative 3. This is x equals 1. And this is x equals 3. Again, uh, maybe if you do not have a computer algebra system, a graphing calculator, 
it's you are not going to get this picture because it's hard to find when this this graph turns, which is right here, and it's decreasing, turns again, and increasing again. But uh, pretty much, uh, if you really need to do a graph, you just wanna plot the uh, uh, intercepts, these uh, zeros, uh, one, two, three, the negative three, uh, one, the one, and the three, and then pretty much you can do something like that. Follow the end behavior, which is left down, down, and right up. This will be a decent graph without a graphing calculator or, a, or any other graphing utility. And there you go. Here you see number 15. It's already graphed. Okay. Uh, how we find those 2x plus 3 equals 0 that will give us uh, 2x equals negative 3 or x equals negative 3 halves yep that guy is uh, right here All right then we have x minus 1 equal 0 that will give us x equals 1 this is the second one and then we have x minus 4 equals 0 that gives us x equals 4. These are the zero of this function, right? And again, if you do not have a computer algebra system uh, and you need to sketch the graph, just plot these uh, axes, right? Uh, 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4, and this one is negative 3 half. Something like that. And then look to the end behavior. This is a cubic of a positive leading coefficient. So it's left down, right up. So you see how similar the graphs are uh, in our case. Pause this video clip and try number 16. If you have those answer, one third, negative one and uh, three, those are the value for which uh, y is zero, we have the zero of the function. And the graph is gonna look something like that. Uh, so again, we're gonna look and we have negative one, positive three, and one third, uh, that should be somewhere here. And then again, this is a cubic of a uh, leading of a positive leading coefficient, so the graph should look similar with the other ones, something like that. Left down, right up. Let's see how, in fact, the picture looks like. You can see it now. Uh, that's the picture that goes with number 16, similar with what we have. Now, let's take a look a little bit to uh, the other type of problem you can have in this uh, uh, zero of the function. You see on this number 17 and 18, the zeros are given to us. X equals negative 2 is one of them. X equals 0, the other one, and X equals 1. These are the three zeros. So, here we're going to go with the factor form which here is going to be x plus 2, right? When uh, x equals negative 2, this will be 0. So that's the reason we have this factor of x plus 2. This is going to be x minus 0 and this x minus 1. So you see again, uh, each factor will be 0 at given value. So the polynomial function will be x plus 2 times x times x minus 1 okay so uh, here obviously you can write it the other way with, uh, starting with the x and they want us to find the standard form 
and you put here y equals or f of x equal so we get y equals x squared plus 2x and then we multiply by x minus 1 and uh, what do we get here now uh, we get y equal uh, x cubed uh, minus x squared plus 2x squared minus 2x and the final form x cubed right and then we combine these two like two, two like terms we have plus x squared minus 2x this is the standard form of the polynomial that has those zeros um, pause this video clip and try number 18 If you end up with this answer for no, number 18, then you did a wonderful job. Uh, let me give you a piece of advice. Um, you can rearrange your factors in such a way to allow you to multiply fast the factors. So you see I put x plus 3 and x minus 3 together, and that gives us x squared minus 9, difference of square. And let's take a look to this type of problem. Uh, this type of problem similar we have x equals zero so that gives us a factor of x minus zero or just x x equals four that gives us x minus four and then we have x equals negative one half and this one you can write x plus one half if you want but the best one will be two x plus one work with this one instead of the other one where you have a fraction so we have y equals x times x minus 4 times 2x plus 1 okay which gives us x squared minus 4x times 2x plus 1 and that will give us y equals 2x cubed plus x squared minus 8x squared minus 4x so is 2x cubed minus 7x squared minus 4x this is the guy okay pause this video clip and try number 20 let's see what you get If you end up with this cubic 3x cubed plus x squared minus 2x then you did a wonderful job if you enjoyed this well math video clip don't forget to click the like button and come back and see square for more math video clips thank you